Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hi, y'all. It's Tuesday again. Time is going by like 90 going dogs. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773, 888-77-JESSE, J-E-S-S-E, JESSE. My brand new biblical question for this week, and it's a doozy. To whom or what are you loyal and why? To whom or what are you loyal and why? A very, very deep question. One I had not considered in years, in years, I had not even considered the, qu- the word or the question, really. It's amazing. And I asked Sunday, when I mentioned the Sunday Night Fellowship, like everybody, most, if not all, most, was like, yeah, I think about it all the time. Yes. So it's very interesting. We have every way that you can watch and support the show. List it on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're busy laying up at a beach, traveling on a plane where the, the pilot's sitting in the jump seat and trying to take the plane down, make it crash, or you're smoking fentanyl, um, you considered suicide when the rainbow wasn't enough. You were swimming across the border, running across the border, whatever. You are riding in cartel trucks trying to get across the border on the trains. You're beating your wife or your wife beating you. You could be listening to the show by calling the listen line at 641-793-1503. On your iPhone or iPad, 641-793-1500. And you can um, podcast the show later as well, if you're not able to just watch it right now. Don't forget to follow us on Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. And Rumble. Dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Rumble. Dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Like, follow, subscribe, ring the bell, and y'all know what to do, right? And to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Rebuildingdemand.com. Rebuildingtheman.com or Bond JLP on Cash App. Bond JLP on Cash App. All right. So it is Tuesday. And every Tuesday is 
the one, the only, the amazing country in Western Tuesday. All my thoughts where the ball been lies. They let me down every single time because the devil's been making homes inside my head. The good, the bad, the glad, the sad. If I could let them all go and give them to God, well, maybe you take this anger from my soul. And I'd shine like a light that's too bright to see And I could lean on God so He could lean on me Forgive, forgiveness, righteous, perfect peace Amazing! Amazing! That song is absolutely amazing and the scenery is my blowing and it's perfect. Thank you. I forgot his name again. Pete from Alaska. Thank you, Pete from Amazing. Alaska. Amazing, Pete. What the? And everybody and their mama love country and Western music. I grew up on it in Sweet Home, Alabama. Sweet home, Alabama. Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. The world gone crazy. And it's going to get worse. Y'all think it bad now, and it is. Buckle up. It's going to get worse because the human heart is evil. And talk about it in the Word. In the beginning, that was the Word. The Word with God. God was the Word. The Word with God. It's talking about it in the Bible. I think they call it like Armageddon or something. Armageddon is in the making right now. It's happening. And then the Christians are waiting to be taken up. They're literally waiting for something to come and take them up physically. Isn't that amazing? They're waiting for something that has already happened. And it's within. You just have to receive it. You have to see it. And I will highly recommend that you rush, hurry up, run, run, don't walk, and start seeing it. Because it's going to get worse, and you're going to get caught up with the world. You won't be able to help it. And the reason you won't be able to help it, because you will not see what's going on. You will be caught up in your imagination, too, in thoughts. And the thoughts will convince you that you need to join the fight. You need to be out there fighting for something. Whereas no thoughts would tell you to lay your weapons down. And let the spirit of the Father fight your battle for you. To fight your battle for you. It's amazing. You can get involved, folks. There is a line open at 888-7753. Jesse. And I'll get to all your calls. But the battle is on. You know, I'm looking at at a distance, a space between me and the, and the things that are happening. I'm looking at the Palestinian and the Jews fighting in this country. And I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it without any opinion about it, no judgment about it at all on either side. And it's amazing to watch a battle without judgment. It's mind-blowing 
to watch it without thoughts about it, just watching it. And you will see how in reality, in like real reality, the fight is about nothing. They are literally fighting over nothing, but because they've been brainwashed and they're living in their imagination, they think they are fighting against something and for something. And the people who have convinced them to fight are, are laughing all the way to the bank because they're getting what they want materially, money and things, and a false, false, false ideal of power. And the people that's fighting underneath them is getting nothing. But because their hearts are wicked and they don't know it, they're out there fighting one another in, in the universities and places like that, places where you're supposed to be having some fun, partying, running around, doing your little classwork, but having fun, ain't no fun there. They have literally been brainwashed. And then they're going to get nothing from it. Zero. Except for the real of fighting, which is evil. That's all they're going to get from it. They're, they're not going to even get anything materially from it or financially from it or anything. That is going to the folks who have convinced these people to fight one another. Young people of the world, in it, of it, and is it. You must overcome the world. And then the, the, the Christians and others are joining the fight and don't even know why. They have identified to and they're joining the fight. You don't have to fight. You don't have to fight no more. I don't want to fight no more. It's time for letting go. Oh, baby, no. I don't want to fight no more. Stop fighting. You've been taught wrong. Don't fight with your so-called friends. Don't fight with your so-called enemies. Don't fight with yourself. Then you shall live. Now, I'm not telling you in a practical sense, if harm come upon you in a physical sense, you protect yourself. But stop the other fight. It's time for letting go. I promise you, if you stop to fight, you'll start to see what's really going on. In the world, because the world is evil. And it's not the world that's evil, but it's human beings of the world. Your friends are your enemies, and your enemies are your enemies. Stop the fight. You know, um, and then I'll get to your call. I got to tell you this. Ladies, women, girls, teenagers, females, whatever you want to call yourself, you've been set up. You've been made to believe that you're worth more than what you are. I've never thought or seen this before. In America. I remember in America, women used to be somewhat decent. They ain't that way no more. I remember in the world, in, a, in this country, I put home first. Women did not expect men to spend their money on them, to act like they're married when they're not. 
But women, you really on a trip. And, and some men are trying to live up to your trip. And all they're doing is getting in hell, deeper in hell. Women, you have been set up. That's why you're walking around half naked, all this makeup on, looking like a clown. All these fake butts you went and paid for at the doctor's office look like those uh, workout balls at the gym. What do you call those balls where they have they big round ball? Yoga balls. Women, your butts are looking like yoga balls. That ain't attractive. A nice little God-given butt is fine. Thank you. All the, everybody at the gym got a big yoga butt. Look like that's all they worth is butt. But they don't know. But ain't it. <laughs> Men like, just a regular, classy woman who is independent from the world, not trying to be like all these other stupid women who can't see. And they're selling their bodies like not going no. It's interesting how women are out there selling their bodies now. They go to the doctor, they buy extra parts for the body. And then they sell it. And when the men say, oh, I just want your body. I don't want nothing else about you. They get mad. And believe me, lady, the guys that's looking at your big uh, ball butt, they're just using you. They just think sex, and that's it. And I know you love the attention, but it's all ego. And then when you get together and it doesn't work out, you wonder why. I wonder why. You wonder why. I see, uh, I see more and more women, especially security guard women for some reason. They wear those, and not only, but they wear those fake eyelashes that stick to the eyes. You ever seen that? I have. What do you think about that? I mean, it's interesting you say security because I think the security, <laughs> the security that works in my building, I think she has that. Is that like a security part of the outfit? <laughs> part of the uniform. And part of the uniform to wear those fake eye long lashes. Those things don't even look real. Don't do that. And I see a lot of security guard women with them on. I'm like, why are you wearing those things to work? It's like you're going to a party for Halloween. Lady, you're looking for the love of a father. That's what you're looking for, and you're not going to get it that way. That way. And men, stop it. Spoiling these women. You're not supposed to be spending your money on them. In the good old days, that would not have happened. Not only would the woman would not have allowed that to happen, the man would have never done that. Zero. I think men and women back in the good old days had somewhat what you call self-pride about themselves that they don't have today at all. And everybody had their mama running around in a little tight, look like panties, long pajamas on or something. Stop it. Men, stop. When you take women out, if you take a woman out for a date, take her to the cheese factory. Take her to uh, Popeye's, Goldenberg, or somewhere. And if she doesn't want to go there, dump her. Because all she wants is money. And she thinks you supposed to spend your money on her. You're not even supposed to spend that much money on your wife. And especially not a girlfriend or some woman you're dating. Stop it. You're messing the women up and the women going nuts trying to be it because they want the money. 
On the first date, test it, men. Go to the cheese safe factory with the woman. If she doesn't like it, okay, bye. Stop by her trips. Stop by her clothes. Stop by her pay her rent. Stop by her cars and insurance and tampons and all that mess. I know guys that be buying women tampons. I'm like, what the? And I remember the good old days. When the uh, women didn't even want to know they were having that time of month. They were hiding. Now they're asking men, oh, I need some tampons. And the guys buy them. I'm like, what the? Grandpa, tell me about the good of this. No wonder these relationships are not working because they are built on everything but love. They are not about love. And you're right, Hassan. The cheese safe factor is, is pretty pricey. So let me just uh, <laughs> let me just help you keep the price down. When you go to get just a uh, fettuccine with chicken <laughs> and one basket of bread and some water and eat very slowly. Or get two for one deal, Joel said. <laughs> uh, and some appetizers to help fill up. <laughs> My producer, Sean, said, I have a crouton, crouton and a water, please. Crouton and water, please. Hurry up and fill her up. Man, you're in control of this. If you didn't do it, she wouldn't be expecting it. And women, you ain't all that. You're seeking, you're yearning for the love of a father, ladies, not sex. But you present sex to the man, and that's all he's going to be thinking of. And then you wonder why he don't love you. When you get together under marriage and you find out the guy never loved you and you don't love him, now you're fighting. Because all you ever sold him was sex. That's all was on his mind. He never meant to marry you. He was just playing. He said yes when he really wanted to say no. And hate said that once he once got a side of steamed broccoli there at the Cheesecake Factory. And that was it. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't have to be spending your money like this. And if a woman bitch about going to the cheesecake factory, give her the finger and be done with her. Because what she's saying, I'm just about your money. That's all I want. I'm your queen. This is from the Daily Mail. Why is this? If you don't believe me. I got proof. Smiling faces sometimes tell lies. But I got proof. This is from the Daily Mail. Alicia and Jay made headlines when, when a clip of their first date went viral last week. She claimed that going to the Cheesecake Factory was embarrassing. Why is this from X? Right. Let me just get the door for you. Okay. He got me at the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. I ain't even know what this for. Uh-uh. Yes. Uh... Would you want me to open the door for you? <laughs> okay. Are you? You're recording me? Yeah. <laughs> he ain't yeah. got a bit of beer with a black this woman This is the anyway. Cheesecake Factory. With all that hair. This is the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. What's the problem with that? Uh, this is a chain restaurant. <laughs> Who takes someone that looks like this to a chain restaurant? 
You want to talk about it? I'm, I'm fine with talking about it, <laughs> even in front of them. Oh yeah, I want to talk about it. Yeah. Come on, get up on in the car. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I would say, you know what? Get out of my car. Take the Uber back home. I'm gone. Bye. Get out of my car. I would have used a word, two, three, a full letter word. Isn't that something? She up there looking like a clown with all that makeup and fake hair. And she say, a cheese came fat. What? The TK factor is nice. Lasagna. The salad is nice. And it's definitely too nice for her. See, the other race men, you're not supposed to be dating these black women. They, are, they think they queens. The black men have lied to them because they were scared of them. They call them queen to try to get along with them. And you are dating them thinking, oh, black and the bear is sweet in the juice. Uh-huh. I would have said, you know what? Get out of my car. Stand right there. I'll, I'll be back. I'm going to park my car. I'll be gone. <laughs> Not even that. I would say, you know what? Get out of my car. I'm out of here. Bye. When will you all stand up, man? And how would the women get better if you don't stand up? She's like, oh, you, how would you have handled that, Hassan? I mean, she's tripping. She's not even, she, I, she's tripping. She's talking about, look at me. He take me a cheese factory. This? What she's the? not even cheesecake factory worthy, number one. <laughs> she's not even Popeye worthy. <laughs> <laughs> she's not even McDonald worthy. But the men have set the women up by spending all their money on. Men, you are fools for spending money on women that you're not even married to. And even then, you're supposed to be careful how you spend, wise in spending. This is from X. The woman who rejected the Cheesecake Factory speaks out. Watch this compilation. I believe that many of you have seen the uh, well now viral video about me choosing to reject the Cheesecake Factory because I wanted more from my date. It's interesting to me that just how a moment in time can shape how so many view you. And I want you to understand that my mission has always been for women, to empower women, um, for women to feel respected, cared for. To be fair, I mean, I was always raised that the man is supposed to cater to you. I mean, you're you courting me, so court me. Mm -hmm. That means wherever I want to go, you take me. Absolutely. Whatever I want, you buy me. That's courting. You know, I'm looking for a provider. So Whoa. I'm expecting to be treated like royalty. I mean, I mean, as a black woman, um, a black we're really woman. tired of having to settle. Um, we want to be treated well. Mm -hmm. We want that soft life. So <laughs> that's what I thought I was going after. Look at that poor guy. He was like, what the? I'm going back to India. She stood up with everything fake. And she was, as a black woman. If ever, we needed you, Lord, we need you now. Man, you have set these women up by treating them that way. Now they think they deserve it. This woman was even overweight. She didn't even have a nice body. A thin body. Nobody want no big body. What the? Quick break. Back in a moment. Come on, man. <laughs> she, does, she does not need cheesecake. She needs a gym. <laughs> Steve, thank you for calling and thanks for holding. How have you been helped by the show? I'm going to tell you this. I believe you might go down in history as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, black man that ever lived on planet Earth as far as I'm concerned. I don't know anybody before you that's been that great. 
You know, freeing the slaves is one thing, but you've been freeing people of their mind, which matters, it should be anyhow, to you more than anything else, because with the mind not being right, there ain't nothing else going to happen right anyway. If you can doubt every thought because you're not your thoughts, if you can doubt every thought, knowing that you're not your thoughts, you don't create them, they're not from God, that they're from the deceiver, the great deceiver, Satan, if you can doubt every thought, you can be free just like that. At an instant, bring every thought into captivity. It's so amazing. When I was a little bitty baby, my mama used to rock me in the career. And that old cotton field back home. Men and women, y'all need to come back to the normal, <laughs> like the good old days. And America will be great again if that should happen. A few announcements before I get moving here. This is Tuesday at 9 a.m. this morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. The Hake Report. The Hake, H-A-K-E Report dot com at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And James Hake is on fire. I wonder how much money he spent on women, on dates. I can't even imagine spending that kind of money on them. It just wasn't in, it wasn't. I remember I was dating this girl in high school, and we had been dating, having fun. She was cute, dark skin, just the right tone for me. And lo and behold, one day she asked me for a quarter for the bubble gum machine. Our school finally got those bubble gum machines, and you have to put a quarter in there. I think it was a quarter, maybe a nickel, but definitely a quarter. And she asked me for a quarter, and I dumped her. I'm like, she just want my money. What the? <laughs> I dumped her. <laughs> when I see her now, that was like, what, 40 years ago. She still remember that. We laugh about it. But men just didn't kill women. That doesn't even make... Why? If it's just for the sex, you go to get the sex free. You don't have to pay for it. Hey, it's like try 55 years ago, your mama. If I've been out of high school since 1968, how many years has that been? Uh, you can't add up. You black. <laughs> you like Joel. <laughs> Fifty-five years. Whoa. What the? <laughs> oh God. But when we were growing up, number one, women would never ask you for money like that. Buy me clothes, pay, pay my rent, buy me a car, take me to an expensive cafe. They have more class than that. But anyway, so the hate report is coming up from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And after the hate report, Joel Friday TV, he blood. I wonder how much money he spent on women. Joel, we're going to have to get the experts in so I can find out. Joy of Friday TV at 11 a.m. today, every Tuesday. And after Joy of Friday TV, the Anchor Baby, the American Anchor Baby show. The American Anchor Baby. 
All right. Let me just finish this story. I'll get to your phone call about how these women have been set up. And the only thing the woman got to offer, she has nothing else to offer today's woman but sex. That's it. The man doesn't care about her intellect at all because it ain't worth a dime. And all she has is sex. Nothing. That's why she put on a fake airline. I mean, airline, uh, L. Uh, eyelashes and fake hair and and stuff her face with makeup and ah. all she is worth is sex and the man ain't even thinking about the you know, intellect at all it's not even on his mind and it's not on your mind either lady because you're selling sex you're sluts looking for slut makers Can you imagine this woman being upset? She's not going into the cheese factory. I would have got, I was like, you, would, you know what? Get out of my car. You ain't worth that. What the? I should have taken you to McDonald's. And apparently, this is a common thing. Watch this from X. What's the most a man should spend on a first date? I feel like if I'm gonna get ready and I'm gonna use all my products to come out with you, I need like a minimum of two hundred dollars. A minimum. <laughs> That's like being nice. You look like a and what does a man get in return for that? My presence. What? Aren't you having his presence within you already? I hear you, but no, <laughs> no. I mean, like I'm here oh, to get different? to know you. I'm here to get to know you. You invited me out. But he has to drop two hundred dollars. Yeah, because minimum. I, yeah, because just, you just because me out. just because you have to do your makeup. My moisturizer is four hundred dollars. My eye cream is three hundred dollars. My serum <laughs> is like another three hundred dollars. I'm spending my money on these products. I'm gonna use these products. Who are you using them for, though? For myself. Okay. But I'm gonna use these products and I'm gonna show up because it's not like I'm gonna show up in sweats. The man doesn't owe you anything if you're just getting to know each other. If you're inviting me out, you owe me a day. Ooh, man, they both standing there looking like prostitute with all that mess on. Why can't you just be a natural beautiful woman? Why you got to make yourself up to look like a clown? I know the makeup people who make it and sell it, they have, made a, they have treated you. You need this makeup, you need that makeup, you need this, and you buy it. And now you walk out looking like you're going to a corner somewhere to... Tell yourself. So this is a thing now, huh? Poor guys. It's not poor if the guy, if the guys, if y'all stop doing it, the women would change. They just know you have them on a pedestal that they should not be, and you're encouraging their ego. It's all about the ego, all about the thrill of it. Man, you were created to lead the way, to only love God, only God, with all your heart, soul, and might, and love your neighbor as yourself. Treat them the way God is treating you. That's what the good old days did, and that was making America great. And these women are so spoiled and out to lunch, they're not even funny. If I was into feelings, I would be feeling sorry for them. They're so lost. And fathers, you're supposed to raise your girls in the same way you raise your boys in the light. In the light. Watch this from the, I'm going to give you another example of how the women go nuts. And just the loss, and this is what happened, man, when the light go out in the man, the woman can't find her way. She loses her direction. And she operates in total darkness. Why is this from the messenger? TikTok has gone viral for complaining that she has, oh, TikToker has gone viral for complaining that she has not been able to get a marketing job that pays $150,000 a year. Watch this from TikTok. I have a 
have a bone to pick with America. So I'm headed to my serving job. <laughs> I have my literal business marketing degree that put me in a cute $80,000 in debt. And I make more serving sushi rolls because I was, I've been applying to marketing jobs for weeks now and the, the pay cut is insane. Insane. But the jobs that are like a cute 150 to 200,000 a year, I'm not getting those. 25 year old chick going against people with so much experience. All I got is my degree. You know, people say, get your degree, but then they don't talk about how you need experience. The degree was the experience. <laughs> that would you get for going to college, you idiot. Stop letting the world convince you of things that you don't want. They make you think that's what you want. And all they're getting is money and power from you. They don't care about you. Why don't you take control of your own life? That's what you get from going to college. I told you, don't go to college. They're just using you for money. They don't care about you. Just like with all this stupid makeup you're putting on. It's for the money. These makeup people, makers and sellers of makeup, they know you look like a clown, but they don't care. They just sell you all this stuff, tell you this is what you need. This is going to make you look pretty. And you buy it and you pack it on and this is what you get, nothing. And the same thing with the so-called college education. Get a job. Speaking of get a job, Go find, get a job at, um, I can't, I forgot. Anyway, uh, on Rumble.com. Get a job, too, on Rumble.com, all right? Men and women, boys and girls, you don't have to go to college. You've been lied to. At first, it was trade schools. When we were growing up, People were encouraging you to go to trade school, get a trade, and have, you can have an amazing job, make amazing money, you can start your own business with that trade, all kind of stuff. Then they decide, you know what, this is, we are not making enough money off these people. Let's convince them that going to college is better than going to a trade school, and you fell for it. And now you're in debt. In debt, because you don't think for yourself. And last but not least, I want to know, guys, if things, have things really gotten this bad? I see the guys riding in the passenger seat, the woman's seat in the car, and the woman is driving in his seat, and he's just uncomfortable. Mama's driving. But I really want to know, is this true? Or is this just an act? Because I know a lot of people just putting out acts and things on TikTok and these different places to get attention. But if this is true, what I'm about to show you now, then, Grandpa, the world really gone crazy. I want to know, guys, would you let your wife do this to you? This is from X. This guy let his... Uh, his wife is taking immaculate care of him. Why is this from X? Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell she's making a fool out of him. She put a pink bow on his head. This is sad. He let his wife make a total fool of him. And she doesn't love him. When you that weak, men, women don't love you. They're judging you. They're glad that they can make a fool of you. 
and she, the fact that she even put, not only that he lay up there and let the, her make him up like that, to put a peat bow on his head, she said in the very beginning, I'm making a fool of you. You weak, pathetic, poeticus of a man. Man, it's not supposed to be this way, and this is why the world is going crazy. Because you're weak. Spending all your money on these people, and you just don't overcome. Don't let the woman be your god. There's only one god. It's not her. You're worshiping evil. John is a first time call out of Texas. John, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thanks for taking my call, Mr. Peterson. You're welcome. Speak up a little bit, John. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Hey, I'm yes, sir. I'm struggling to find peace in the decision to continue fighting my ex-wife for influence over my children. They live an hour away, and it's taken a lot of effort, and I've taken a lot of abuse. And uh, seven years after after the divorce, I'm struggling to find peace to continue fighting in this way. There's a lot. There seems to be a lot more living to do besides uh, struggling to continue to be in, in their world and struggling to take the abuse that I get when I go there. How many, how many kids do you have? Four. And how old, the youngest is what and the oldest is what? Seven and 14. Oh, okay. The two oldest ones live with me. Oh, the two oldest ones live with you. And why are, how are you fighting with her? What is Tell me, describe the fight. Um, she remarried two years after we divorced. The new step, whatever, um, will hide the uh, schedule of a daddy-daughter dance, for example, and take my daughter to the daddy-daughter dance. They will take the children from me, <clears throat> keep them from me during my time of possession, the court set up and, you know, I'll involve the police and, uh, they'll eventually bring them back to me. Um, the stepdad will step, whatever will yell at the, you know, when I go to pick him up, he'll yell things at the exchange and he, uh, he's the next cop. He's got that kind of, I'm going to tell you how it is situ- uh, type of attitude. And it's really, um, it's really tough to be silent in that situation. And why? My youngest son, sir. Why is it tough to be silent in that situation? Well, uh, my my natural reaction is to my natural reaction is this person is not a member of my family, and he's disrespecting me in front of my children, and I would like to defend myself, but. The laws being as they are, you can't, if someone's yelling something at you, you can't go shut them up physically, you, you know, you're, or you would be the one that went to jail, you know, you, but what are your options? Why do you call that a natural reaction to yell back at him because he's yelling? Why is that a natural reaction and who are you defending? It's not an actual natural reaction to yell at him. I've. I call it a natural reaction because I don't think about it. It's something that I feel and what I feel like doing or what, you know, I feel like someone's stepping to me. Someone's challenging me. If you want to challenge me physically, you know, let's go. But we, you know, we cannot. He, he will yell and pretend like he wants to fight. But if there was a fight, I'm very certain I'd be the one going to jail. Are you your feelings? No. Then why do you defend them? Why do I defend my feelings? Yes. Uh, it seems like one more, one more item on top of the stack that is preventing me from having peace about continuing to put so much effort into, it feels like I'm going into her world and dealing with all of this crap. Um, if you're not really your feelings, 
if you're not your feelings, why do you defend them? I I don't really want to defend them. Then why I mean, do you do it then? Do what? Defend your feelings. I'll if I have defended them, I'll stop. They're really not all that important. But you're not telling me why you're doing it. You you said no, I'm not my feelings. So why do you defend them, knowing that you're not them? I don't. Um, I don't have. I don't really feel like defending. But, I don't. But you want to defend, to defend them. The only way you don't because you don't want to go to jail. But if you didn't go to jail, you would defend your feelings, right? Defend my feelings. Um, I'm trying to raise my children. Uh, I'm trying to sh- teach my boys how to be a man. I'm trying to give them a good example. And I, I don't, it doesn't seem like going there and allowing people to abuse me is the right thing to do. But, but if and you're the not, your, to me is, if you're not your feelings, how are they abusing you? By keeping the children from me when I make the effort to go see them. I think that's a form of abuse. But, John, if you're not your feelings, how can they abuse you, period? You said, no, I'm not my feelings. And if you're not your feelings, how are you being abused? Financially, let's start with that. There's more, but it takes time and money to go see them. And if they take them from me after I've spent time and money, that seems like abuse. What is your, so you are your time and you are your money? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. Not so much the money thing, but the time thing. Are you your time? That is a good question. I don't know. Then why do you think you are? With my time here on Earth, it's tough to imagine wasting it. But if if you don't have time, I don't know what that means. What do you mean your time on Earth? I'll die someday, and I don't want to waste my life, my time, going, it feels like groveling to the, to my ex. Yeah, are you able to hold on for me? Sure. Let me take a break. Don't hang up, all right? 888-775-3773. Jesse, a quick break. Two more hours to go. Hake is coming in with Hake news. Not the fake news, but the hate news. And I'll be back in a moment. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, they have rough lives, they're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that, out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. They're pushing flu shots. Soon maybe you can spray it up your nose. Terrible. A couple more old ladies released by Hamas. Isn't that nice? 
over there in Israel and uh, Palestine. Snow is coming. Watch out for foggy roads. Seven plus maybe killed in Louisiana near down near New Orleans. This is the end of hour one of the Jason Lee Peterson show. It is uh, country and Western Tuesday. October 24th, 2023 AD. Is it 24th or 24th? Stay tuned for hour two. JLP will be right back to your calls. The lines are full. Uh, More great conversation. But first, fake news, not fake news. Flu shot propaganda. The scared woman-led CDC, unchristian woman-led CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, recommends everyone ages six months, the babies and older, get a seasonal flu vaccine each year, but fewer than half of Americans get vaxxed. The, to boost the nation's uptake, the agency is reviewing a nasal spray flu vaccine that can be self-administered. Little babies self-administering flu vaccines? No thanks. If, uh, if approved, you may be able to take your flu vax at home next season. Get yours. Uh, Israel-Palestine war propaganda. Since the deadly terror attack on October 7th, foreign governments, including the United States, have been working to secure the release of hundreds of hostages. Yesterday, Hamas released two more hostages, according to the far-left female-run outlet The Skim. Uh, 79-year-old Nurit Cooper and friend and neighbor, according to CNN, 85-year-old Yocheved Lifshitz. I went through hell, she said. Uh, in a media conference today, talking to the media, taken through Hamas's huge network of tunnels looks like a spider web, she said. Taken from kibbutz near Oz, one of the many towns and villages in the southern Israel that Hamas attacked. This comes after two others, a mother and daughter with dual U.S. and Israeli citizenship, were released on Friday. Hamas said that they authorized yesterday's release of Uh, for compelling humanitarian reasons. They're too old to take care of by these guys, maybe. The Israeli military has yet to comment. The IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, said they believe there are still an estimated 220 hostages, potentially including 10 Americans, so-called Americans, in Gaza. There are talks that Hamas is prepared to release uh, 50 hostages in exchange for fuel. These negotiations are reportedly in the final stages with the help of the Qatari government, Qatar. President Biden, so-called, has also said he won't back a ceasefire until Hamas releases all hostages through the United States. The United States actually reportedly pushing Israel to hold off on a ground invasion to see if more hostages can be released. Hamas says that more than 20 of the hostages have died as a result of the airstrikes from Israel, I guess. Something Israel dismisses as part of Hamas's psychological warfare. Don't know. Israel's defense ministry said Monday they are preparing a multilateral operation from air, ground, and sea to wipe out Islamist Hamas. Meanwhile, in America... A storm's a-blowing. Anyway, parts of the northwestern United States and northern plains expected to uh, see the first significant snowfall, according to Kami Nonsense Network. Uh, Today, a surge of cold air, deep in moisture, expected to spread through from Washington and Oregon through much of Montana in the coming hours, probably already happened, before a potent storm drops into the northwest later tonight. Uh, Many high elevation areas will be buried in more than a foot of fresh snow. Beautiful, huh? That's what meteorologists say. Some lower elevation areas will see the snow melt and uh, refreeze, potentially causing treacherous ice to form along roadways and sidewalks, so be careful out there. Wind speeds also increase during this time and blow snow, which could significantly reduce visibility and worsen travel. And speaking of travel, be alert on the road. At least 158 vehicles crashed along Louisiana's I-55 on Monday interstate after dense fog caused several pileups or was the, the occasion for several pileups. Authorities said at least seven killed, dozens of others injured when the super fog heavily impacted the area just west of New Orleans. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP, Hour 2. Got 
Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show already. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773, 888-77-JESSE. My biblical question, to whom or what are you loyal? And why? Am I saying that right now? Yeah, it's sounding good today. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm looking at the word, and I'm looking at L-O-Y, law, and then A-L, L, O. To whom or what are you loyal and why? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com. And if you're busy doing whatever you're doing and you just can't sit and watch the show right now, normally you podcast, you can be listening live on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line on Talk Stream Live at 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. And don't forget to follow us, Cozy dot tv slash jlp cozy dot tv slash jlp and jlp talk on x and i'm gonna get to your super chats here in a minute you can donate and have them read out loud your super chats by call by uh at uh buy me a coffee dot com slash jlp talk and rebuilding the man dot com rebuilding the man dot com it's tuesday it is country and western to stay. Ha! Grandpa, tell me about the good old days when a line between right and wrong wasn't so hazy. And Grandpa, <laughs> when lovers never air ran away, stay beside one another. Right. Oh, May. Whoa, whoa, Grandpa. Tell me about the good old days. Hassan Dow. What the? Amazing. I want to go quickly back to John. And John went through a divorce, fighting with his ex about his children. And that is amazing to me. Hey, John. Hey. So I want to go back, and then we, uh, I'll uh, see what the question is. But you said that you are not your emotions, right? Correct, sir. And then what were we saying before the break? If you're not, let me I, ask, if you're not, go ahead, make your point. I seek, um, I'm seeking God's will in what I perceive as a battle for my fatherhood with the two younger children. Do, is, you, do you think God would want you to do it the way you're doing it? He would make quite a few improvements, I'm sure. Like what, for um, example? Relying on him, uh, the battle is the Lord's. For Samuel seventeen forty seven, and it, I've leaned on my own um, thinking and my own efforts too much in this situation. How do you think God would want you to rely on Him? When you say rely on Him, what would He want you to do? That really is my question, and has been for some time. M- may I tell you? 
Well, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Because you mentioned you were fighting for your father uh, hood. No one can take that away from you. You you are the father. No one's going to change that no matter what happens in the physical, right? But you know what God would want you to do about this situation? Absolutely what do you think? nothing. He would want you to do nothing. He would tell you, don't cut the, the, uh, the baby in half. You have a woman who is evil. The mother of your children is an evil woman. And to the point that she would destroy your children trying to get back at you because she has no love. And so to add to that, you encourage her because when you fight with her, she's getting a thrill from fighting with you over your children. And in that thrill, she's destroying them even more so just to keep the battle going. And even if you were seeing your children 24 hours a day and if she had this battle, this evil in her heart, she would destroy the children anyway. God would want you to not to let anyone or anything, including your children, be that important to you that you will fight over it. Because in fighting over them, it's all about you and your ego, just as it is about that woman and her ego. It is not about the children. Because if you love the children, you will be able to walk away from it like that. And knowing that whatever God's will is, that's what it will be. It's all ego between you and this woman and, and that man that she's unfortunately married to. But you're dealing with an evil woman. Any woman that would take a man to court or do anything to prevent him from seeing his children and prevent the children from seeing the father is an evil woman. She has no love. And so you're fighting evil with evil. And I would I, do what you want. But I would recommend you let it go and let God's will be done. And you work on you. You're not your feelings, John. You're not your thoughts. You're not your body. You need to work on you so you can know what God's will is for you. You don't know that yet. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesse. Um, I've had a lot of pain about this, and I'll pray and... Be God, and hopefully it won't hurt so much. But w w describe the pain. What do you mean by you have had a lot of pain? I love these children, and watching them seemingly drift away from me, fall into child psychology, um, getting drugs prescribed to them, getting COVID shots put on them, glorifying their stepfather, um, all these things that cause me pain. And why do you call pain love? I had hopes for my children that this uh, doesn't line up with, and I think the difference is hurtful to me. And why do you call pain love? I'm not sure that I do call pain love. You just said you have pain and you told me why, and you call that love. Mm. I'm not sure how to, I'm not sure how to answer that question. I, I have love for these children. It pains me to see them in these situations I don't want for them. You don't have love for them because if you had love for them, you would have no pain. There mm -hmm. is no pain in love. There's pain in hate and anger. And so you have any good feeling, which is anger, which is hate. And then you get these bad feelings, which is hate. And you call it love. And if you had the love of the father operating through you, there would be no pain. And you'll be able to walk away from it because you will see there's nothing I can do about it. And let the father will be done. And you would not feel anything about it. Anyone that has pain is saying to me they have their ego and they're calling their ego love, which is the nature of the devil, the unnatural nature. 
And so when you go over there to get your kids and you see the man that she's with now and he's arguing with you and carrying on, he loved the battle too. Two egos fighting one another. And instead of you seeing that your ego is at work and let it die, you're feeding it just as he's doing it. You are not your pain. That's the nature of the devil. That's the unnatural nature. That's why God said we must be born again of the Father, which would take us back to our natural nature. And in his nature, there is no pain. I promise you that. There's no pain. You can take it or leave it. No matter if your children, your wife, your mama, your daddy, your friends, your whatever, right? There will be no pain because you will be yeah. whole and nothing will be missing. Understood. I appreciate the words. And so when, 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 you, when you're over there and this man carrying on with you and you feel like you want to fight because you're feeling this pain and you want to respond, you should be glad to feel that so that you can see that's inside of you and you need to overcome that. It's not that man fought that you feel that way. That was already in you because you were traumatized by your mother and you became an emotional ego. That's why you must be born again of the father. Have you forgiven your mother? I, she died when I was 15. It's a uh, hard to imagine it's hard to remember who she was to me and what I think about her. It's all kind of a weird young memory. Right. Well, you need to be still so you can remember and that way you can see that you're wrong. She can help herself either and forgive her though. She's aspired. You can forgive her by getting to know yourself because the same thing is driving you right now. All these emotions and fear and anger. That's the nature of your mother, which is the nature of the devil. And you must be born again by forgiving her and realize you're wrong for being angry. But you got to see it for yourself. And how about your My father? Mother, uh, I've, my mother, the one memory I have of her, or the best understanding I have of her, is one of a heroine, a hero. Everyone that knew her, loved her. She was a huge benefit to her father and her family. Um, she was a huge benefit to my father and our family and everyone in the community. Uh, that's kind of all I remember about her. So what you just told me, your mother had a lot of issues and she tried to make herself feel better by conquering the world, pretending to the world that she was amazing. She was running away. No, from, sir. She, she was a servant. Yeah, right. She was running away from a pain. No, sir. She was uh, a servant to those that needed help. Right. That's what angry people do. They serve. Um, but, John, there, let, me, let me finish that point. What, yeah. Is, what it, is it possible in your for a woman to do the right thing? I feel that, uh, or it seems in my memory, that my mother may be it doesn't really, she doesn't really fit into that mold. She uh, seemed to be quite selfless and quite effective in the way that she helped other people. Amazing. I do remember at her funeral, there might have been a thousand people there. It's right, it's, a woman can do the right thing when she become right. And just as a man, the way that she become right is be, returning to the father. And once you're born again of the Father, you become right, your nature become right, and the old nature passes away, then you can do right once you become right. And unless your mother did that, she was not right. And, and a lot of times when these people are carrying on serving and helping and going around the world, preaching the gospel and all things, because they're unhappy and they're trying to find happiness by becoming a servant to the world, and they're miserable. I don't think she was that, what you described. She served my father in my father's business, which was serving the community. Um, mm -hmm. She she always uh, honored my father and her father. But you don't realize I, that serving the community and serving the world is not a sign of being right. 
In and of itself, I could understand that, yes. Did you forgive your father? Yes. You went to him and forgave him? Yes. Good. Are you doing the silent prayer? Yes. Every not, mo- as consistent, not as consistently as I need to. And why not? Lack of discipline. I would highly recommend that you get busy working on John so your eyes can be wide, become wide open from within and you will see how to live life in a perfect way. You will overcome the world. You will be in the world and you will overcome it. You will be able to be present instead of lost in your imagination thinking about tomorrow or yesterday or what's going to happen with this or that. All anger will disappear and you will develop a clear mind. And that's what God wants you to have, a renewed mind. But you got to work on you. You're not your feelings. You're not your thoughts. You're not your body. And you need to discover who you really are. And when you find out what you're not, who you're not, then who you are will appear. And right now you don't know who that is. And once you start to yeah. see that, you're going to lay down your weapons and there will never be another reason to fight except to physically protect yourself from harm's, harm's way. But otherwise, other than that, there would be nothing to fight for. Understood. So I, would, I believe I'm on my way. These words help. Thank you. Yeah, I would recommend you drop the fight with this woman. Just leave it alone. Walk away. And whatever God's will is, because he's already destroyed the children already. And I'll work on me and let God's will be done. He'll take care of it. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, let me know how it goes. All right. Sure. All right, bud. Take care. All right. Lay your weapons down, folks. Really? There's nothing to fight for. I promise you that. You hear people say, I'm fighting for my country. I'm fighting for my country. No, you're not. It ain't getting no better. I'm fighting the occupiers. Somebody made you lost mind believe you're fighting, fighting the occupiers. Occupying what? It ain't your land. It ain't your piece of property. Oh, it's time to wake up. A new day is here. Stop following the way of the world. Don't go with the crowd. The crowd is always wrong. Always. That's why they call it crowd. It's that individual who take that straight and narrow path alone. Man or woman. The crowd is always wrong. Never right. Can't be right. That's why they call it crowd. What do your mama, what does your mama do when you go and forgive her? She build a crowd against you. Because she has no love. And she can't stand alone. And the crowd join mama because they bl- they are blind and they have identified with mama and not with what is right. It's time, <clears throat> it's time for the game to end. It's time for you to have life and not death. I've sat before you, death and life. Choose life. You're already living death. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super. Super Mr. J bought you three coffees. Sandy and I were holding up a sign that says, Homers for Hamas. And they beat us up and called me an infidel. And Sandy an infidog. We are on our way back to Bond ASAP, ASAP, <laughs> as soon as possible. We done with this fake outrage mess. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. I'm telling you, for all this fighting in the world, is Armageddon. It's all for the ego and nothing else. It ain't about love. It ain't about freedom. It ain't about nothing. Everybody just feel good fighting. Watch when you fight again. Watch your little ego go through the roof. Amazing. Thank you. Nangiti Avian Koi bought you five coffees. Jesse, 
Thank you for my super cozy and warm hoodie. The all thoughts are all lies all the time hoodie is amazing. Heart emoji. Even after a few times washing, still soft. Heart emoji. Thank you all. God bless. Love. Heart emoji. From Amsterdam. All the way from Amsterdam, heard around the world by everybody and their mama. You're welcome. All amazing. Thank you. That's from uh, that's from the rebuildingtheman.com slash stores. Yeah, check where out you can our find merch that. at rebuildingtheman.com slash store. And All then right. you f- find the links there. Nice. Uh, Mike Young bought a coffee. Hey, Jesse, it took me a while to realize that every single black race hustler has the spirit of evil devil emoji. Purple one. In them, because the failure of their parents, because just like you said in your last book, The Antidote, they had no father, and I understand that they are evil in the heart, but like you say, they can't help themselves. And I will say that while they were much, yo- while they were much younger, I strongly believe that nobody ever told them to forgive their mother and return to the father. What do you think about that, Jesse? Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Soul Conscious bought you five coffees. Jesse, you must see this movie called The Ripe. It is about an exorcism, but everything you speak about every day. The identity, intellect, thoughts, anger, the heart, resentment, and overreacting are all in this movie. But I looked it up. It doesn't exist. The movie doesn't exist? <laughs> I think he misspelled it. Ripe. R-I-P-E? Uh-huh. It doesn't exist? Right. What? Uh... I, think, I think it's R-I-T-E. It has Captain Hook in it. Anthony Hopkins. Make sure you check out the spelling of the movie. Let me know, all right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kid Combo. You be black. Maybe so. Soul conscious? Probably. <laughs> you black. Kid Combo 1 with a diamond. But having sex with different men makes you a slut. And then trap emoji, monkey emoji, and musical notes emojis. Amazing. Thank you. Being Enlightened Till I Rise is a monthly supporter on uh, Rumble. Yee-haw! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Country Western Tuesday. Prep ha- Prep Hi, I'm Paul. <laughs> also a monthly supporter, subscriber on Rumble. Uh, thank God I don't need to be out there dating these women! Double exclamation mark. Now I'm going to take my beautiful, sane wife to Olive Garden. Winky face emoji. <laughs> they all think they're coming out to make $200,000, not realizing everyone works up to that with experience. That's Clown right. emoji. Yep. <laughs> what the? Um, if the men stop doing it, the women would set out. And they'll come back to being normal. Take off all that stupid makeup and tight stuff and looking like sluts on the corner. If the men stop, the women would change too. Really. They only the women are only doing it because the men are feeding into it. Indeed. Amazing. Greg- Thank you. Gregory DeRosa, five coffees. Pass the bucket. Church is over. <laughs> nice. Pass the bucket. Amazing fellowship. Check it out at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. And thank you guys. That's all for now. Thank you all. So much. I do appreciate it. Let me go to Cam out of Arkansas. Cam, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning. Uh, I called and talked to you on Friday about some custody issues I was going through myself. Uh, after that last caller, I'm not really sure what to say. <laughs> uh, but I... I had spoke with you about, you know, what your thoughts were on joint custody, basically. And uh, you had advised that I, since I'm this far into it, go ahead and, you know, take visitation and uh, just kind of be done with it all. And uh, so I spoke to my attorney and basically said just that, you know, I'll just take the days I have now and and carry on. Uh, the response I got was similar to yours in that, uh, I was basically advised, you know, well, you spent the money and time thus far and have an agreement on joint custody. So why wouldn't you take that? No child support, split time and all that. Um, and so I, I guess I've been a little conflicted about, about that one. I mean, you know, one way seems rational, the other way 
I think it's more about letting go. But I guess I just wanted to catch your thoughts on that and and just speak with you a little more. My thoughts on on what? Um, well, I know that you're. Uh, I've heard you say to not split the baby and stuff like that, and so I was curious why why or what your thoughts on joint custody were, and why not to go that way. Uh oh. So didn't we already? You said we already talked about it, right? Yeah, I called you on Friday. And we've, what, we've talked for maybe twenty minutes. What did I say about it on Friday? Uh, well, you'd said not to uh, to not mess with the joint custody anymore and to do the visitation. Um, and uh, it, and I actually, I'd also asked you if you thought you know it was too extreme to just let go entirely, even let go of the visitation and just just let go of it all and like it, you know, since I'm this far into it, I've already spent the money on the attorney to get this far, just take, take the visitation. And, you know, when, when I had said that to my attorney, the response was somewhat similar in that we're at a point of joint custody. So you spent the money. Why not take that? But why that doesn't sense? that make sense to you? You had to fight to pay for your own child or children with visitation, why would you want to spend any more money when you haven't even seen how the visitation thing is going to work out? Because she's going to give you hell just with the visitation. Well, we've been doing visitation for a little over a year. Um, and, and But at this point, she's agreed to a joint custody. And, and that's that's what I mean. Like, we're already at that point now. Oh, so you're at the long. point where she's ready to sign the paper and agree with uh, visitation? The, I mean, uh, custody? Yeah. Are it, you going to have full custody? No, it would be a 50-50. But 50 um, fifty ain't custody? That's visitation. I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> either way, I guess, he, you know, he would go and spend half the week with her and then half with me and so on and so forth. And how long, and what's the, what's the visitation time? Uh, I would get like two days a week. So why, Plus I would, why not go with that? Why keep spending all your money on this t- stuff when you shouldn't have to spend one dime on your own child? You're dealing with an evil woman. Have you already spent money on the visitation? I mean, on the custody thing? Yeah. You already spent the money on that, too? Yeah. Oh, I see. And so you spent the money on that, too. And she said, okay, I agree to that. And all you had to do is sign the paper and it's over? Basically. Oh, um, I didn't realize you had gone there. So since you've already wasted your money, why not just sign the paper and move on? Why is there a question about it? <laughs> I can't. Uh, I guess I'm not sure. I'm just kind of been in my head about it, and I'm not sure. But just think about it. I thought you only spent the money for visitation, and I'm telling you to let, see how that goes, right? But I didn't know you yeah. had taken it beyond that, and you spent the money on custody too, and yeah. it, it's all done except for signing the paperwork, right? Yeah. So why are you still having questions then if you've already spent the money for it Everybody have agreed on it. Why is there a question? It's not like you decided if I should spend the money for custody. It's like you've already spent the money for custody. Yeah. Why is there a question about that? Hold on, Cam. Yep. Amazing. Quick break. Back in a moment. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry. 
because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't want to be angry. You want to speak up. You want to disagree with what's going on. It's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear. You won't have doubt. You won't have worries. You'll be able to see, but you got to stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love. Bro. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. If you have not checked out, if you have not checked out, go, I mean, you have not checked out BeatClubUSA.com, you're missing it. And here is what you're missing. Watch this. People tell me I have a lot of alpha energy. Jesse, Jesse, what gives you so much alpha energy, they say? Is it energy drinks? No. 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 Is it cigars? No. It's Alpha Jerky. Alpha Jerky. Alpha Jerky from Big Club USA. Alpha Male. And you can have Alpha Jerky energy too. Amazing. 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 And if you put in JLP33 promo club, promo, promo uh, code, JLP33, you get 15% off. Uh-uh, good. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. So check it out, all right? That, I had never, I hadn't, I hadn't, I, I smoked a cigar a little bit at a cigar club years ago, and I really didn't smoke then, but I didn't know you was not supposed to inhale the cigar, so I did with that one. I was so high, I went home and peed out. What the? <laughs> oh, and that cigar had a really nice taste to it. They said one of the better ones. But anyway, for personal shout outs, go to cameo, C A M E O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Birthday shout outs, encouragement shout outs, congratulations shout outs, uh uh uh, amazing shout outs. Whatever it may be, I'll do them for you at cameo, C A M E O, dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. I want to go quickly back to Cam out of uh, Arkansas. And so Cam uh, is at a point where he can get custody of his child, but he's, he seems to have some issue with it. So, Cam, if you have already paid for this and all that needs to happen now is signing the paper. Uh, your ex have agreed to it, you have agreed, you spent the money on it. Why is there a question about that? Uh, I, I guess I'm just not, I'm, I'm conflicted on what the right, like independent of the money and time that's been spent, I'm, I just don't know if it's even the right thing to do. If what is the right thing to do? To, to take that, the half of the custody and and what would be wrong with it? Um, I guess I don't know what would be wrong with it. I'm, I know right off the bat, I probably wouldn't be able to exercise it. Um, I may be able to in the future. He's only two years old, so there's a lot of time uh, for my situation to change where I could probably take care of him a little more. But 
When you say you wouldn't be able to, sure. you would, are you saying that if you got custody, you're not going to be able to be at home to take care of the, the kid? Not right now, no. So then I why did you go life. for custody now, knowing that you were not set up to do it? Well, I, I thought that's what you were supposed to do. I, I really just got wrapped up in the whole, the whole thing. Speak up uh, a little bit. I, I just got wrapped up in the whole thing when, when everything kind of popped off at the beginning. Um, and I had intended on, or at least hoping that I would be able to, you know, if I had to get him a daycare or something like this. Um, and, and I, frankly, I just thought that that's what you did when, when, when people got divorced and there were custody issues that, you know, the father was supposed to have a part of the, you know, half of the custody. And now that you have it, you don't want it. Well, I'm a little confused on if, because uh, if that's the right thing or not, because I'm not sure that, well, I, I am pretty sure when it all went, when everything went down at the beginning, I, I don't think I probably should have pursued it. And now that I have, I, I guess I'm having some regret that I, you know, the money spent, I guess, but. And so now that the money is spent and you have custody, split custody, what would happen if you didn't, go and pick the child up for now because you're just unable to, would that take away your custody rights? Uh, if, like, in the future, if that was, like, a chronic problem that went on for, I suppose, years, I, I guess she could take me to court and say, hey, look, he's not exercising it. Uh, and where is the future? Uh, in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and why are you thinking about something that's in your head, which is an illusion? I, I don't know. I, well, <laughs> you, you asked what would happen, and I, I think that's probably what would happen. But you don't know that. You're just no, thinking that and all thoughts are lies. What, now that you've gone this far with it, you have custody. Why not just take it one day at a time and see what happened? Okay. No, no, no. That's a question. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a, I don't know why not to do that. It seems like a better solution than, than living two years instead of taking things two years at a time than taking things one day at a time. Right, and because two years doesn't exist. It's only in your head. And in yeah. your head is an illusion. It's not even real. And you're already living something that's not even real. And it brings stress and worry and uncertainty and, and all kind of stuff because it's an illusion. You've gone yeah. this far with this. You have custody. Take it one day at a time. Stop looking back, which is another illusion, and stop looking forward, which is another illusion, and live in the present, which is real. Take it one day at a time. You have your child now. See what happens, and you'll be able to deal with it accordingly. Okay. Yeah, that does seem to be my problem is I'm, I'm looking. I've got regret, so I'm looking backwards, and then I'm, you know, I'm, trying to be strategic so I'm looking in the future I'm thinking you know well she could you know if I didn't exercise it long enough she could try and take him and blah 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 and that's creating quite a bit of conflict for me and you know who's telling you that right you know who you're communicating with yeah who <laughs> the devil right when will you start worshiping the devil needs to happen right now. When will you start worshiping the devil? Today. So why don't you get busy doing that? Work on you. All thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything, except for precious thought. Put gas in my car, uh, and buy me a, a, a 
tractor, whatever, right? But you're listening to the devil. You got what you wanted. You wanted to visit uh, Cassidy with your son. You got it. Now, see what happened. That's all. Don't think, oh, Lord, I ain't going to be able to be with him all the time. I'm not going to be able to do this. You're worshiping the devil. Why don't you stay present with God and he will take care and fight your battle for you? If you stay present, man, you'd be surprised how things just work out. Love, the nature of God, is greater than the nature of the devil. Yeah. Are you doing the silent prayer every morning, every night? Yes, I am. And yet you believe in thoughts. Yeah, uh, they they're they're pretty. Uh, you know, I, it's like a, a flood. You know, yeah. There's, they're it's very powerful. Just a just a like a flash flood of just thoughts. I understand that. But so, the, the the prayer is helping me a lot. I'm able to, especially when emotions pop up, kind of recognize them on the spot. But it, it's a flood out there, man. But after a while, the flood will drip, 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 dry. Stay with it anyway. If you get yourself caught up in thoughts and emotion, just know that you are. Come back to your present. Be aware of your body in the present. And eventually, the thoughts become weaker and weaker and weaker. The flood become weaker and weaker and weaker. And then you can start building your solid foundation from okay. within. So do what you want, but here's what I recommend. You stay with the silent prayer every morning and night. Watch those thoughts. Do nothing else but watch those thoughts about those things. And then with your son, now that you have, full, you have custody, take the custody and see what happens. You've paid your money. You've gone through the whole process. Don't bring up another situation because you're in this cave, which is hell, which is darkness, and you're just going around and around in that cave making all bad decisions because you're listening to the devil. And the yeah. devil gives you one suggestion and makes you think that's right. Then you go do that. Then you say, oh, that's wrong. Here's another one. And you try that one. And then that one's wrong. Here's another one. You st you're, you're consulting with the devil every time you consult with thoughts, with your mind. Yeah, going around in circles. Yeah. You got me going in circles, round and around we go. Stop it, man. You got custody. You got what you wanted. Don't let the devil tell you it's not going to work. What about this or what about that? Let all those thoughts pass and just take it one day at a time. All right. And don't be second guessing and second all that. You're worshiping the devil when you do that. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. In what way does it make sense? Well, you've pretty well described. It's like being a rat in a cage, just chasing his tail. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. a, you know, the second guessing, especially which leads to quite a bit of regret. You make a decision and then then it's already been made and then you're questioning whether or not that was the right, so you go make another one and just on and on and on. And, and you know that that's not you doing that. You're listening to the thoughts. And all thoughts are from your father, the devil, when you believe them, because the devil live in thoughts. God is a non-verbable God. He doesn't talk to you with words. He revealed things to you, and the devil talked to you in your voice and other people's voices, and you have taken on that identity as though it's you, and that's where the problem is. You got to let all identities go. Yeah. And so I'm repeating myself, and then I got to run. If you've yep. already paid your money for this lawyer to get you custody, you've got to the custody. The only thing that needs to happen, you need to sign the papers. I would just take it from there, sign the papers, and see what happened. Okay. And don't let the thoughts tell you that it's not going to work. All thoughts are all lies all the time. 
And if you don't believe them, it will work. But if you believe them, it won't work because we live by faith. Yeah. And you have to be careful what you believe. All right, Jesse. Did that help? Yeah. You see what to do now? Yeah. What? I do. What? To continue observing, uh, you know, my the thoughts and just staying aware because what I'm doing now sure ain't working. And if you've if you've got custody of your of your child, see what happened. Take the custody and see what happened. Thank you and see what happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And don't let this woman know that you're doubting you can do it. You might not be because she used that against you. Yeah. Have you already done that? No, no. I, I, uh, the only communications that her and I have are, hey, I can come pick him up at this time, and then hey, you can come pick him up at this time. That's pretty enough. Cut and, pretty cut and dry. Yeah, keep it that way for your own safety. Yeah. And a way will be made, Cam. Do the silent prayer. Doubt every thought and just take it, stay present, and it'll blow your mind. Yeah. I wish you well. Let me know how it goes. Thanks, Jesse. All right, buddy. 888-775-3773. Seth is a first time. There's one line open. Seth is a first time caller out of North Carolina. Seth, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. Thanks for having me. I just wanted to call and thank you for the content. Your um, show has changed my life. Uh, my mother listens to you. I discovered you uh, on the episode with Brian Warner, the uh, Satanist guy in the metal band. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Satanist, but uh, right. But yeah, I, I, I like the uh, band that he's in, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for uh, for for your show and uh, all that you've done. You're welcome. Have you forgiven your mother? Yes, I have. How did that go when you went to her? She, um, well, it's funny because um, it, I didn't do it until we had both started listening to your show, but. Um, it all went went as 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 good as it possibly could have. I guess you know, having listened to your show as well, she realized the mistake that she hadn't. Um, everything is amazing. And how about with your father? You want to forgive your father? Uh, n no, I didn't. I haven't forgiven my father. Why not? Um, I I guess. I guess I, I didn't feel that I had anything to forgive him for. Nice. Most adult children and young children do not resent their fathers. And those who think they resent their father only resent them because they have identified with the mother. And they think, mm -hmm. they think what they're thinking and feeling about their father is theirs. But it's really the ideas from the mother. So, well, I, I, can I really appreciate it. Yes, yes, sir. Well, uh, if um if I ever visited L.A., would uh, I be able to attend a, a service on Sunday? Absolutely. All are welcome. Just no appointment necessary. Walk in. Doors open at 1030. The meeting start at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you, your show, or, or the a service on Sunday and How and Ray's Chicken is about the only thing that I can think of that I would want to see in L.A., so <laughs> hopefully I can make it out there and meet you guys. Absolutely. I wish you well, buddy. Thank you very much for having me. All Kevin. right. You're welcome. 888-775-3773. There's a line over. Let me go to Elton, Elton out of uh, Massachusetts. Elwin, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello? Give me one second, Jesse. Let me take off speaker. 888-77-JESSE. <clears throat> there is the line open. You want to jump in? We're going to try to get to all of your Hello. calls today. Hello? Can you, can you hear me, Jesse? I can, yes. All right. Um, I called the show uh, like a week ago, um, and you had told me 
So basically, if I forgave my mother, I said yes. And if I forgave my father, I said no because I couldn't get into communication with him. And you told me to get his phone number. I finally got his phone number. And um, he ended up blocking me. So my question to you is, where do I go from there? So did you speak to him? I wasn't able to speak to him at all. I left him a few messages. I left him a video message on uh, through oh. my cousin so he could send it to him. Well, from there, there you, you keep living your life because you can't make him talk to you if he doesn't want to. And uh, yeah. so now just forgive him, realize he can't help it, and you stay with the silent prayer and just live your life. And just don't, just don't be angry with him for whatever happened. He can't help it. And God will forgive you. He'll fulfill that void, that, that longing that you have for the Father. He will take care of that. And you'll be fine. Because you can't force another person to do something they don't want to. Nor should we. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I thought. I, I, I sent him a message and I said, hey, you, exactly what you just told me. I told him through the message. I said, you can live your life. You know, don't worry about, like, uh, don't worry about me anymore. I just wanted to close this chapter in my life and keep my, my life moving forward. So, yeah, everything that you just told me, I basically told him in, in other words. But um, I also have one more question, Jesse. Okay, hold that question. Uh, I want to ask this first, and then you can ask. Why, um, yes. in your messages, did you say in the beginning that you wanted to apologize for resenting him? Um. Basically, because I didn't know that my mother was the one that, well, I, I kind of knew, but that she took me away from him. Right. And uh, basically, I just wanted to, to talk to him, and, and I resented him through my mother, which I just heard you say in the, in the last caller, that it's the nature of the mother, and I did have the nature of my mother before. And so did and you I, say what, in the message, I, didn't, I just found out my mother took me, kept me away from you, and I didn't know it? And I'm sorry for, that she did that, and I'm sorry for resenting you for it. Did you say that? No, in I didn't message? say that. I didn't say that, but I will send a message through my cousin again and tell and have him show it to him because he's really close to him. He sees him every day. And so why did you sure say I'll, that? Um, because I, I honestly didn't think about it. I'm, I'm keep it real with you. Oh, okay. And yeah. um, actually, I just didn't realize it until you just said it in the last caller. Oh, okay. I understand that. Yeah, that would be my, I, I would recommend you do that. That would be my last message. If he doesn't respond to that, I'll be done with it. With it, it just went to me. You know what, Dad? I, I, I just found out my mother kept me away from you. I did not know that. I'm sorry she did it, and I'm sorry for resenting you. Okay, and I, I hear the music in the background, so if you want to take can the break hold? earlier, there's no problem. Can yep, I definitely can. Okay, hold, hold on. 888-775-3773. One more hour to go. I got to take a quick break. Hake is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news. And I'll be back in a moment. Back in a moment. run from evil within yourself or outside of self. You got to deal with it. And you need good in order to deal with evil. And God is good. You need to return to the Father. And you'll see within you, he will fight the battle for you. And he will fight it without because he will show you how to deal with it. And you will have no fear. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else. Nothing else means yourself, your children, your wife, your things, your ego, your reputation, and all that. You can't care about any of that. The children of anger will use it to control you. But if you love God, he will renew your mind, and none of those things will be before him. And so when they go after you, oh, well, you may take my body, you may take my things, but you're not going to take my soul. And that's a true reality. Michael Cohen, the rat, 
may meet Trump again in that fake fraud trial. Alaska Airlines pilot Wilden, to use the black vernacular, Washington State Republican brought a gun to Hong Kong. And that's a no-no, I guess. And women in Iceland want equality. This is the end of Hour 2 of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. Country and Western Tuesday continues to Hour 3 after a few minutes here. But first, fake news, not fake news. JLP will be right back to your calls. Um, After the JLP show, The Hake Report... And then after the Hake Report, Joel Friday TV right at 11. And then, of course, American Anger Baby at noon. That's Pacific time, okay? Two Central, three Eastern for Anchor Baby. One Central, two Eastern for Joel Friday TV. Attack on our greatest president. Maybe a mini reunion. Michael Cohen, perhaps not a Christian. The lawyer, the rat. And our greatest president, Donald J. Trump. Today, the two could come face-to-face in court as Michael Cohen testifies in Trump's New York City, uh, New York civil fraud trial. Civil meaning not criminal. Cohen worked as a lawyer and fixer for our greatest president for over a decade. Once said he'd take a bullet for his ex-boss. Big talk, big liar. The pair's relationship deteriorated deteriorated as Michael Cohen became a key figure in investigations against our greatest president, including over alleged hush money payments. No proof. Cohen turned against his ex-boss, calling him a con man and a cheat. Talk about projection, huh? Pots and kettles or something. Now he is expected to testify about how the Trump organization allegedly, allegedly, not allegedly, inflated the value of its real estate holdings. Trump expected to be in court today. Maybe it's already happened. I don't know. Terror attack or just a total nutcase? Who had travelers on edge, say the far left females in this, at the skim and Commie Nonsense Network CNN? An Alaska Airlines pilot. Sunday, an off-duty pilot allegedly shut down engines, or tried to anyway. I think he did. Pulled the fire extinguisher handles to cut engine fuel on an Alaska Airlines pl- plane traveling to uh, San Francisco. The pilot was riding in the cockpit jump seat. Not rare for off-duty pilots commuting home or to another shift. The airline's captain and aircraft's captain and first officer quickly responded to keep the engines from failing completely. So said the airlines, Alaska Airlines. The flight crew, the flight crew, removed the dude from the cockpit, subdued him until the flight carrying 80 passengers diverted and landed in Portland, Oregon, PDX. I presume. Suspect taken into custody facing 83 counts of attempted murder and reckless endangerment. Liberal FBI is investigating, so expect to hear the truth to come out. Yeah, right. Uh, Alaska Airlines said that they're reaching out to each passenger to discuss their experience and check in on their well-being. Isn't that sweet? A man arrested for his Second Amendment in Hong Kong. I'm sorry. This was an honest mistake, said Washington State Senator-based Jeff Wilson. In a statement after he was recently arrested in Hong Kong carrying a gun through an airport, at least he wasn't loaded up with drugs in Russia like Brittany Griner. The Republican state senator said he did not realize he had packed his pistol in his briefcase while he and his wife traveling for a vacation to Southeast Asia. He now faces firearm offense punishable by up to 14 years in prison and a fine of more than $12,000. What a mess. Speaking of mess, messy women, and even in Iceland. Isn't it too cold in Iceland to be messy as a woman? Never too cold. Um, Tens of thousands of women were, uh, including the prime minister, walked out on their jobs to protest over gender equality. I'm James Hake. Oh, no. One more minute. (laughs) Even though Iceland is ranked as one of the most world's most progressive, meaning communist, countries, When it comes to gender equality, no such thing, some women still earn at least 20% less than their male counterparts because they're worth less in their uh, jobs, positions. My take, as they uh, are part of, as part of the protest, women also encouraged not to do any household chores to show the importance of their contribution to society. Makes me want to spit, and I have my spittoon right here. Two. This will be Icelandic women's first full-day strike in almost 50 years. What a mess. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. jcleepeterson.com slash show. Hour 3. Got 
Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show already. It is Tuesday. You can get involved by calling 888-773-5373. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. Jesse, my biblical question for this week, uh, it is amazing. To whom or what are you loyal and why? To whom or what are you loyal and why? You know, amazing, amazing question. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessileepeterson.com slash show. jessileepeterson.com slash show. Looks like I'm riding by a haunted house, huh? <laughs> I'm going down the road. There's a haunted house. Ooh. I'm looking at the picture here. And uh, if you're out and about working out or doing whatever you're doing, making Halloween costume. I was in a store the other day, and I noticed that they have Halloween stuff up for sale, Thanksgiving stuff up for sale, and Christmas all right now. And what I said to one of the workers there, I'm like, yeah, I have everything up already. Why not one thing at a time? <laughs> he was like, they're making money. And the people buy it. Isn't that amazing? Come on, man. I know. But anyway, you can wa uh, watch the show no matter what you're doing. Uh, I mean, listen to it if you're out and about doing whatever you're doing. And you can podcast later, but you can be listening while you, whatever you're doing. By calling the listen line on Talk Stream Live at 641-793-1500. Seven nine three one five zero zero. Follow us on JLP Talk on X, JLP Talk on X, and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. And to donate and have your super chats read out loud, your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. And rebuildingtheman.com. Rebuildingtheman.com. All right? And don't forget to like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe. Do all those things y'all know to do. I do appreciate it. It's Tuesday. It's the last hour of the show today. It is Country and Western Tuesday. <laughs> when I was a little bitty baby, my mama used to rob me in her crater. In that old cotton field back home It was down in Louisiana Just about a mile from Texas County In that old <laughs> cotton field back home Amazing! Country and Western Tuesday! Who let the dogs out? Amazing. 
888-777-5373. There is a line open right now. You want to jump in. I want to go quickly back to Elwin. And Elwin had another question about forgiving his father. He forgave his mother. He finally got the number to his father. He tried to forgive him, but his father would not communicate. And he had one other question for me. Elwin, thank you for holding. Go ahead. Um. Did you know, Jesse, that there's a song, there's a rap song about you out there that it starts off with you saying that you're an Oreo cookie? No. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I have yeah. white on the inside, black on the outside. Exactly what the words say, and it says that you used to be black on the inside and black on the outside. I know. What a mess. <laughs> but I return to the Father. Amazing. Yes, sir. So, Edwin, no, stay... think... yes, no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I just want to say a great white hope. That's right. Um, um, stay with the silent prayer. No matter what happened with your father, just know he can't help himself. Don't be angry at him anymore. And just go live your life. But stay with the prayer so you can watch the not you and die from the not you. And the real you will appear. You will enter into the kingdom of heaven within. But the old nature have to die. The nature, and the nature is ideas and plans and identities you've picked up over the years. Those things have to die, and you'll be fine. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate your time, Jesse. I appreciate the boys over there, and you guys have a blessed day. Thank you. You too, buddy. Amazing. 888-7753-773. Dest- Dester out of New York. Destro, uh, welcome to the show. 2,900 accord for a Qualester Garcia and a 22 Nissan. Destro, hold on. Uh, Destro, he's been waiting a long time, Sean. Let me know when he's ready. Uh, Jamie. Jamie out of California. Jamie, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Destro, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Amazing. So... Um, I want to ask the the biblical question. You want to do what? I want to ask the, um, the, the biblical question. You want to ask or answer it? Um, answer it. I'm sorry. Uh, to whom or what are you law and why? (sighs) Okay. So I am loyal to one of my, um, Big brother's um, friend, which he's considered "quote unquote" my girlfriend, because um, when I was in my early twenties, um, we would usually do um, business together in a way, and until this day, um, we used to kind of um, talk about business and I guess investing, and um, and there'll be times that there'll be times that, that what's it called he um, he helps me out and I help him out. Like for example, he asked me how to overcome um, like negative negativity, stress, and my belief, and all that stuff in a worldly way. And for me, for example, I kind of do in the way help him out. I do sometimes help him out about God, which you know I'm not trying to show off. But another example that I help him out is to go forgive his mom and mom and his dad for presenting them. Um, he did forgive his dad, but not his mom, which it was amazing what he did. And and also, there'll be time with my family for some reason because I just don't know. Like, I guess before before I noticed you, um, before I noticed you, I thought, you know, I, you know, I thought I should probably help my mom out to, in order to, I don't know, I guess, in my belief, trying to please God or something like that in a, in a sort of short of the way. And then in the past, um, when I was in high school, I would usually try to be loyal uh, with um, with my with my wrestling team because the reason why because you know um, when I was when I was with them um, in the wrestling team um, I would usually get picked I would usually get get picked by some of them and you know the, you know I was trying to be loyal to them so that way they don't have to you know, kind of pick on me or trying to be I guess um, I guess be cool with them or kind of be popular because back then I was an outcast and I'm sorry. And then lastly, um, I don't know if I'm going to make sense with this last part, but, um, 
I'm I'm in a way I'm like loyal into martial arts because martial arts seems like interesting in me because it just not also it helps me to I get fights but it also helps me to be to have confidence and to be disciplined. And so, so you try, so you're being loyal by doing things for these people who have done things for you. I believe yes. Oh, okay. And why do you call that loyal? Because, because I I try to I actually respect them, and I admire. In a way, I believe I admire them as well. Oh, okay. And if those people that have done things for you, and you 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 give it back by being loyal to them. If they got, if they made you angry or disagree with you about something or made you angry, would you still be loyal? So if they be angry with me, um, or I probably would have say no, because if they're angry with me, um. It should be, I believe it should be the wrong reason. <laughs> and so, you, so you, you're being loyal because they're doing something for you that you appreciate, you like. But if you became angry, if they disagreed or, you, or they became angry at you about something, you would no longer be loyal. That's a, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I think so. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it is a tough question. I'm not going to lie. Right. And would you be loyal to someone who had never done anything for you? Okay. I think, okay, I, I, I think, I think what you're getting to, um, Yes, I believe so. You would? Yeah. You want to smoke on it? Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you responding. You said so much in this. So much I want to respond to, but I got to wait until Sunday. I appreciate you. You really brought it to light for me. I appreciate that. Okay, and Let do, me you ask, think, do you think there's... Your name is, did I pronounce your name? How do you pronounce your first name? It's Jaime. Oh, Jaime. Okay. I, I thought so. All right, go ahead. You're about to say say what? Is there there's a possibility if I can ask you two quick, two quick questions, though? Yes. So the second question is, um, how do I overcome um, loneliness? Because last night when I did my sign prayer, I acknowledged that I felt I see myself being lonely. Right, lonely. And yes, and honestly, too, before I I noticed about you, it, it, there was kind of uh, things that it will be helping me to try to not come back. Us, I guess, come back now. to your phone. Come back. You said that was what now? Repeat that. Because before um before I noticed about you, um, there be there be times that. I really feel lonely, and something will be tough for me to to stop feeling lonely because I guess in the past, um, I was well to this day. I'm usually like an outcast, and as an outcast, you know, I guess you know it's tough for, tough for me to not feel lonely. If right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so let me ask: So you want to know how not to feel, how to overcome feeling lonely? Yes. So who is the person that feels lonely? Me. And who is you? Who is me? Um, who are you that feel lonely? Who are you? Who I'm in, who I am I that feels lonely? No, who are you that feel lonely? Um okay, I, I hope I hope I can answer this correctly. Um a person a person who feels um, 
a person who who will be the one that usually be be put aside like with you know with people especially with girls and but tell me who you are a mexican <laughs> you a mexican I, yeah <laughs> Uh, and so, are you a Mexican, or that's just a title that someone gave you—an identity? A title and identity. So, so are you your identity? No. So why do you well, call yourself a Mexican then? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I'll take that back. <laughs> I hate to say this. I I believe I am an identity. And so. You're not an identity. That's the problem. You think you're an identity. Who who else are you? So we figure out you're not a Mexican. That's just a, a false identity. Okay. And so who else are you? Are you, you asking about the false identity, huh? Um, who am I? Okay, so... Um, um, a person who a false identity. Um, I would say a. Yeah, I, I yeah, I gotta, I gotta smoke on that, Jesse. To be honest. And the reason I ask, because you are not lonely. Loneliness is just an idea. It's just a thought in your head that tells you that you're lonely. And the moment you believe it, you feel what they call lonely. Loneliness or lonely. And it's not you at all. It's just another false identity. There is no you to be lonely. So if there's no you to be lonely, why would you believe this idea that you are lonely? It's just an idea in your head. It's not even real. But because you identify with it, it feels real, but it's not. It's an illusion. So you, the reason why I believe believe it because I'm believing too much to the devil? Yes. You're worshiping the devil, and you're listening to his voice that tells you that you are lonely. And when you tell you that, you feel that way, you think it's real, and it's not real. I see. And then he tell you, well, if you could be around people, if you can get the girls to accept you, if you get a bunch of people to accept you, you won't be lonely. But all people who need the company of a crowd or even need the company of one person is lonely in their mind. And that's why they try to always stay active or keep somebody around them so they don't feel lonely. Because it's, and they all, even with the crowd there, or even with the wife loving the husband, or the husband loving the wife, they still feel lonely because it's a phony identity. It's not even real. And nothing or no one can take that away. The only thing that can take it away is that you lose the idea which is a thought that is you, then you will never feel that way again. So I got to ask, ask, ask that, <laughs> um, that, um, not all, but the majority of people who are in a relationship, like boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband and wife, not all, but most of them, they're not happy and still lonely, huh? Right. They are not happy at all, but the devil told them, if you get a wife, if you get a girlfriend, or if you get a husband or a boyfriend, if you get a car, if you get more money, or if you have a, live in a certain neighborhood, if you identify with this identity and that, you'll feel, you won't feel lonely. And he lies to them, and they get all those things, and they still feel lonely because they still have the idea in their thoughts, and all thoughts are lies, and they have identified with the idea. And the, and the death is about dying from all ideals, all identity. So if you want to overcome this false feeling of being lonely, you got to let the thought about loneliness pass. Amazing.
Amazing. It's just a lie. And, and if you don't believe the thought, you cannot feel anything. Yeah, this is this is really crazy, JC. Like, I never <laughs> thought, like, you know, overcoming thoughts and ideas is really hard. And God. Right, and it's only hard because all your life, all you've ever done, as all people do, is build identities, build ideas, and they identify with it and think that it's them. And so it feels like life. It feels like them, even though it feels like death. It is death. They don't want to let it go because if I let this idea go, who will I be? They say. But that's the devil telling them that. Have you ever been in that position before, Jesse, when you were young? To feel lonely? Yeah. Absolutely. And how do you overcome that? By overcoming the idea of it. I started to, once I started to search what was happening inside of me, get to know what's going on with me, I start to realize that all these things and ideas and feelings I have have been wrong. It's been illusions. It's been of the ego, and it's not me. And that's when I start to overcome all that. It's going to be amazing, too, when you let those ideas die. We let those identities die. And that's what it means to be born again. You must die from identities and ideas. You must have no identity, period. So the first step to overcome it is just to ignore it when it when it comes to your mind, huh? 100%. See it and let it pass. Okay, then. And then, and then e- e- even if you have to say to yourself until you don't have to say it quietly to yourself, oh, where's that thought coming from, that lonely thought? That's not me. I don't feel that way. I don't want Because you would never make yourself feel lonely. So it's not from you, it's from evil. And so let it pass when it comes. Just notice that thought of loneliness is coming. Don't make a phone call. Don't do anything of yourself to get rid of it. Just notice it, and it would disappear. And this is why um, this is why Jesus Christ doesn't like people to feel lonely because at the end of the day, every single people are not alone because he's because. Jesus, this is right. Is up with them on their side, huh? Right, because anyone that feels lonely and accept it as them, they are children of the devil. They are worshiping the devil, and they can be even quote the Bible. They can be going down to the front of the church and accepting Jesus. They can be preaching Jesus, but they're still lonely because they have not been born again of the new nature. Lonely feeling is of the old nature, which is from the devil, and it's all an illusion. I see. And then this last quick question. So lately, not all the time, but I've been talking to some people about, uh, about you know, apologizing, apologizing their mom and dad for resenting them. And I just want to ask um, if me telling, telling people about that is considered doing a Jesus, Jesus Great Commission or not really? I wouldn't be concerned about Jesus' great, great commission either because you would build a false identity around that. But if you see that people are angry and you know now that they need to forgive, just tell them to, to go and forgive. But don't be thinking, oh, I'm doing Jesus' great commission because that's another thought and it's a lie. Because now you're going to try to do Jesus' great commission and if it doesn't go the way you think idea it should go now you feel like you let jesus down i see so don't be thinking don't get into any more thoughts you want to overcome thoughts you want to live a life of no thinking no more thoughts don't put up don't 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 gather any more thoughts but overcome the ones that you already tied up with okay so forget about Jesus' great commission, all right? Okay. And you just work on you, watch those thoughts, and stay present. And whatever it is for you to know, it will be revealed to you. And you will see it clearly and not just in words and thoughts. Because all thoughts are just ideas. It's not the real deal. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. 
Amazing. Stay with it. Hi, me. Hi. All right, buddy. All right, take care. Okay. Amazing conversation. A seeker with real questions. Seeking questions. Uh, let me go to first time caller out of uh, Florida. Elijah. Elijah, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, Elijah. Hey, how's it going? All is well. All right. Uh, so I've been smoking on this one. <laughs> and can you hear me? Loud and clear. Uh, Go ahead. I, oh, okay. I, I was going to say something. It wasn't talking, but. Like, all right. Yeah. So I've been smoking on this one, and I just feel like women nowadays, they really just, I don't know if they really want to rebuild men because it's just like, uh, <laughs> you know, I understand the mission that you're, you're trying to do and you're trying to accomplish, but as an alpha man, I feel like an alpha man is born and not made. And women nowadays, they go to work. They pay their own bills. They drive their own cars. So it's like, why do they even need a man? Or why would they want to run into a beta man transitioning into an alpha when they can just meet an alpha of their equal social status, you know, and then and continue on with life instead of just running into these betas and then trying to be their mama and take care of them. And, you know what I mean? That's just a whole another mission. And then also, I feel like social media has ruined true chivalry because it's just like you can't just take a woman out to eat at a simple place or just take a, a, a walk in a park or anything because now everything is social media, social media. So you have to take a picture of, of this fine dining or fine lifestyle. But you don't have to do it. You don't have to follow what social media. No, you don't have you don't have to do it. But I'm just saying, like as for the. That's what the world turned into now. You said that you don't that believe that into. women want alpha males? No, I said beta. Oh, you know, no, they don't want a beta male. Women want every woman that you ever met, every woman that you will ever meet, every woman that you have ever known, and every woman that you will ever know, no, no, is looking for an alpha male. I don't care how much money she has, what type of job she has, what type of house she lives in, where she lives, all her little phony friends. Every, every woman is longing for a man to bring her out of the hell she's in. I agree. And even if social media is influencing them in the way it is right now, a, a real, she still want and prefer a man. Uh, it's in her soul, it's in her spirit to yearn, yearn for the father. She's looking for a man. And I agree with that. So what part of it that you disagree with? Uh, the part that I disagree with is all I was saying was, okay, because it's re rebuild of the man. So, but how are you going to rebuild you know, and make someone turn into alpha when they don't even know what alpha is. Like, they don't have any true people to look up to to be, to be alpha. Well, you, so then they, they run into these alpha women because these women are, like I said, they're doing everything already themselves. So but these women are alpha now. They're not, they're not beta. They're not submissive. They're not, you know what I mean? They're, any man they're doing everything you, themselves. Any man that tell you he's an alpha male, he's a beta male. He's not an alpha because if a, a man is an alpha male, he never has to say it. He just live it. Can you hold for me? Elijah, can you hold? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, hold on. Sean, make sure his phone is all right. It seems like he's not hearing me or something. Back in a moment. notice after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business, but because they've been told that if you don't get along from the 
bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true. It's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. Couple announcement. The Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. The Hake, H A K E Report dot com from nine to eleven AM Pacific time. And after the Hake Report, Joel Friday TV. He black. Joel Friday TV. At eleven AM every Tuesday. And you don't want to miss. Better known as All Kansas, 11 to 12 Pacific time. And then after Joe L. Friday TV, The American Anchor Baby. The American Anchor Baby at 12 noon Pacific time. All right. Um, and if you need counseling, we have the best counseling service on this side of heaven. By phone, Skype, or walk in. And you can go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or call 800 411 Bond. 800 411 All right? And be patient, because a lot of folks are trying to get counseling and they want it right away. And we're so booked up. Until I can't get to everyone in one day, all right? So just be patient. We'll get you in as soon quick, as soon as we can. So when you check in and you're talking to the scheduler, he's going to tell you, oh, this is what we have right now. Be patient. We'll get to everybody and their mama, all right? Rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND. 800-411-2663. And last but not least, I do sign all the books, my amazing books. All right. Um, From Rage to Responsibility. Amazing. And then the, uh, the scam, how the black leadership has forced black America and the seven guaranteed steps to spiritual, family, and financial success guide. A little small pocket guide. You follow those seven steps. If you follow them, you can't go wrong. But you got to do it. And last but not least, the antidote healing America from the poison of hate, blame, a victimhood, a deep book. My last one I wrote, a deep one. I recommend all of them, but I definitely recommend that one. And the seven guarantees stuff. And all of them, but that one. I will sign them. Go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or call 800 411 2663. 800 411 Bond to order the books. Let me go. Oh, Elijah hung up. 
So Elijah was saying, if I remember correctly, that that women didn't want beta males because because they are already, especially if if they are already in such social status or whatever. But I want Elijah to know, and, and, and something else he said, you can't build a beta male. Women don't want built beta males. No human being can build anyone. We are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man, by pointing them back to their natural self, which is God, of God, returning to the Father, men and women, return to the Father. And only God can do that because you are a spirit, but my point is we can't do it. You're in a fallen state, and you need to overcome that fallen state, that nature, and return to your natural nature when you return to the Father. But Elijah hung up, and uh, I can't get a response. Let me, let me do this. I need to get to some super chats here. Super, super, super chat. Super chats. Amazing. Stan69 with a diamond on DLive. Oh, did we open the treasure chest? I forgot to open it. Oh, I forgot. Treasure chest is not open. Which may be fake news because I'm kind of slow. Uh, with no, a diamond. Didn't do it. I forgot to say it. Stan69. JLP, a runaway slave That's who right. stole the master's horse. <laughs> <laughs> I stole his spurs, his saddle on the back, and his Mexican blanket. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Evgeny Crosby with a couple of diamonds. Sheila Jackson Lee is at the Cheesecake Factory watching Church with Jesse Lee Peterson. Wow, we got that coming up for you, too. <laughs> Sheila is a mess. Uh, Henry Ford lives with a diamond. Shaniqua eating up all the cheesecake. <laughs> Costly date. <laughs> I know. Watch out for Shanika. She's a queen. <laughs> Over on uh, buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk, Soul Conscious says, Jesse, correction, the name of the movie to watch is called The Right with Anthony Hopkins. My bad for misspelling it. How Hashtag you, he black. How did you spell it before? The Ripe. Oh, <laughs> what the? He black? Yeah. He black. Hashtag. Thank you. I'll check it out. Eli- Thank you. Elijah Blessed. Good morning, Uncle Ruckus. The wor- this world is messed up from social media. Before social media, you could take a woman out to fast food restaurant and it wouldn't be a problem. Now it turned into a showcase of, look what I got this man to do for me. I understand what you're saying, but you can't blame social me- media for that. It's the man himself. Because we're all responsible for ourselves, each individual as adults. And anyone that blames anyone for their lack of, is weak and pathetic and lost. And so if the man was right and the woman was into social media and she was, oh, I want to go here, you got to do this, you wouldn't do it. And she would have to overcome or suffer and be lonely. It's up to the man. It's not social media. Social media is only getting away with it because the people are weak. If you didn't follow it, Nothing will happen. But I understand the point. Thank you. Elijah Blessed with another coffee. This answer is for the caller with the custody. The best thing to do is work on self and set yourself up for the future. The woman is already taken over by hatred and sulking her spirits into the kids. By the time you work on self and get right with God, the kid will be old enough to realize he has been tainted and his father is not a monster but a provider and a warrior for not giving up. Well, don't, don't work on yourself for the future. Work on yourself for now because there is no future. The future is just another idea in the imagination, right? Another, uh, God, truth, love is now. But I understand what you're trying to say to that person. But work on yourself for now and tomorrow will take care of itself if it, just hap- if it should happen. All right. Thank you, though. Thank you. Rob D2112 says, drop her off at the soup kitchen. Just <laughs> give her a package of ramen. <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> Over on Rumble. That's what love is. Eric, Thank you. Eric bought three coffees. God made 
woman before original sin. How wasn't that setting us up for failure? <laughs> because he needed you to fail so he could stop having ma- to make people with his hand from the earth. So he made it, he let the fall happen so you could have sex and come through that way. Zuzu CC on three coffees. Husband, Jesse. Your husband. Hank is cheap. I wonder where he got that from. Hmm, emoji, four of them. Uh, You're right. Men go by how you present yourself. Plus, it's best to keep him guessing, not to pull it all out there. Hashtag self-respect. I used to wonder why I was a side chick. I got great personality, but the men didn't see that. (laughs) She said, you cheap? Yeah. And what were, how you cheap? Oh, because I bought myself steamed broccoli at the... Cheesecake Factory. Oh, I see. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Amazing. Thank you. RT Army Guy bought 10 coffees. Visiting El Salvador, law and order has made a comeback filled with peaceful and nice people. Gives me hope for the return of America, he says. Nice. Someone bought three coffees. Bib- Thank you. Biblical question response. All right. To whom or what are you? Law uh, Law. And why? Loyalty is allegiance to another and acting in their best interests. However, the problem is not knowing what is best for another or even yourself. You can't be loyal to another. All we can do is what is God's will, and it is to him alone that we can be loyal. Amazing. Thank you for that. I put my two cents in on Sunday. And thank you, guys. I do believe that that is all for now. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. I um I got to do this. I want to show you the spirit of anger. What it looked like and what will happen to you and even worse because anger is evil and anger keeps you away from your true nature and causes you to operate in your false nature. And then you don't have a free will. This is what's driving you when you have anger. A man drive through a parade. Insider in June, this is from Inside in June, a man crashed his Chevy through the barrel at a Portland Rose Festival. Dash cam footage showed the man experiencing road rage. Watch this. Tonight, new harrowing footage of road rage and a close call that sent families at a parade in Portland running. Dash cam footage obtained by NBC affiliate KGW submitted by prosecutors as evidence in court, providing several views inside suspect Sidney Mecham's pickup truck. Oh my God. In the video, you see Mecham frustrated, stuck in traffic due to road closures clearing the way for Portland's Grand Floral Parade. His anger boiling over. They got it all blocked off. The Lloyd Center exit, the Convention Center exit, every motherfucking exit. You punk- Mecham then plowing through traffic cones and blowing past crews blocking a highway exit ramp. Bystanders sent running as the Chevy Avalanche lumbers onto the parade route. Thankfully, no one was injured. A police motorcycle and an unmarked police car unable to stop the vehicle as it exited the parade route. Sidney Mecham eventually parked his vehicle and was later arrested. Page 18, line 2, last name Mecham. Charged with 38 counts, including attempted assault and reckless endangerment. Amazing. Sorry, JLP, listen lines. Listeners for that noise that we were getting there. I don't know why that's still happening with the uh, saw bites, but they're, they're working on it. So sometime between now and 2030, it'll be fixed. Um, amazing. See what ain't going to do? He wasn't trying to, according to the report, he wasn't trying to hurt the parade people. He was mad because the roads were blocked for the parade and he couldn't, the S is all taken. He couldn't get where he was going. That's what control you. 
you don't have a free will. He was, he is possessed with the spirit of evil. And every human being that has not been returned to the Father is possessed with evil. I want to show you quickly another person who is possessed with evil, all evil. And she does not have her free will as you don't have one. I don't have one. No one has it. Something else is making you do the things you do, think the way you think, and feel the way you feel. Something else is doing it. Sheila Jackson Lee, just on a rant, rage. Fox, this is from Fox. Sheila Jackson Lee, a Democrat from Texas, was recently heard on recorded audio going off on one of her staff members in a profane profanity laced tirade. Watch this from X. I don't want you to do a goddamn thing. I want you to have a brain. I want you to have read it. I want you to say Congresswoman it was such and such day. That's what I want. That's the kind of staff that I want to have. So some stupid other mother did it and I need to uh, ensure my um, schedule and uh, you know if, if Boo Boo did it did it face did it and nobody knows a goddamn thing in my office. Okay? Nothing. I gave it to you. Your job was to get it on the calendar, imprint it in your brain, or send me the information back saying, Congresswoman, I made sure that the Ovid Duncan Tell event that you gave me uh, for a so-and-so date at 7 is on the calendar, not to oh, Jerome Hansen. Okay? So when I called Jerome, he only me sit up there like a fat, stupid idiot talking about uh, what the he doesn't know. Okay? Both of y'all are up a fucking ass. It's the worst shit that I could have ever had put together. Two goddamn big ass children. The idiots. Serve no goddamn purpose. They ain't managing nobody. Nobody's respecting them. Nobody gives a shit about what you're doing. And you ain't doing shit. And this is an example of it. Wow. That's the kind of excellent black mother that's raising children. This is why the black children are out doing what they're doing, folks. Not because of racism. They have evil mothers. And she's passing it on to the children. And last but not least, you don't have a free will, and you're dumb if you think you do. You are blind and don't see what's really going on with you. You are not in control. You're not alone. Fox, speaking of Dave Chappelle, that woman, I already knew Sheila Jackson Lee was evil. Just watch her over the years, and she like, call me. You should have let me know Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. I ain't going to keep... James want me to apologize to the audio podcast listeners again. Start stream live. Sorry, y'all. It's not my fault, but I didn't do it. I'm going to go off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a Sheila Jackson Lee on my staff. <laughs> I'm going to do a Sheila Jackson Lee as soon as the show is over. This is David Chappelle. Fox, member of the audience at David Chappelle show on Thursday, reportedly walked out after he criticized Israel bombing of the, uh, Z- 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 Zazer. I used to say it. I can't say it today. I'm like, J- what? G- Jaza. My throat won't say it. But anyway, CBS, watch this. And Dave Chappelle causing controversy while speaking about the ongoing war during a recent show at the TD Garden. People who attended Thursday night's show tell the Wall Street Journal Chappelle, who is Muslim, referred to what is happening in Gaza as war crimes and said students should not lose their job offers for supporting Palestinians. Some in the crowd cheered his comments while others got up and left. These UFOs keep coming to Earth and it made me think of an idea for a movie. So they come back to Earth, decide that they want to claim the Earth for their very own. It's a pretty good plot line, huh? 
I call it space juice. <laughs> <laughs> and they got up and walked out, and the, and the uh, and then Muslim people went support Palestine. What the free Palestine or something like that? All anger, all ego. Let me go quickly to Jonathan, a first time caller out of Nebraska. Jonathan, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. How's it going? All is well, sir. Hey, man. I just had a, a few questions that I, I've been struggling with, and I've been listening to you for the last three months, and it uh, has to do with my ex-wife. Um, so she's got a drinking problem, and uh, I ended up getting full custody of the girls, and she keeps on um, trying to get me to work on restoration. And I do that, but I feel like she's only doing that because she wants to get the girls back. Because when, when we start working things out, she basically tries to uh, not abide by the court order and do this and do that. And then always comes back at me like I'm controlling and I'm this and that. And I'm just, is it time just to walk away? But, Jonathan, why are you listening to the woman? Don't you know that every time a man listens to the woman, he suffers? Absolutely. Then why are you listening to her and you're seeing the games that she's playing on you? What's wrong with you that you keep falling for the games? Obviously, I'm probably just being weak. And why are you being weak? Why are you being weak? Why are you playing with the devil like that? Because I guess I'm a, I'm afraid that if uh, I guess I don't after being married I don't I don't want to get a second wife but I do want a family. Why you need a second wife? I guess I, I don't. I just I want to do uh, give my girls. I mean I'm I'm dad and I'm, I'm I have full custody of the girls. I also have two other boys, but I want my girls to have also a good womanly role model. Why um, they need that them. if they have a father? You don't even know what a good womanly role model is. Look what you've been getting all your life. You're right. And so why do you want to do that when they have their father? All they need is their father. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. No, that was a question. I know, but I'm looking at it as you're making a very good point. They, they don't. Then why are you li- playing with the devil? This woman has proven to you she's evil, and she's, and you still go back and play with the devil. The problem is not with her, it's with you. Why are you doing it? That's a good question. I guess I need to, I need to stop doing it and become stronger in Christ and rely on the Lord and, and not myself. Especially right. not on her. But, but, but you're getting what you deserve because you keep playing with the devil. And the problem is with you, you should give that woman a finger and go live your life. You have your kids. You got what you want. And you become, inwardly, you become the man that God created you to be. Uh, have you forgiven your mother? Absolutely. You went to her? Yep. Ha- and are you doing the silent prayer every day, every night? I am doing the silent prayer every day, every night. I just started doing the silent prayer about uh, a week and a half ago, and I can tell that that is absolutely, it's absolutely helping me because I'm realizing that all these thoughts are not mine. They're not from me. Yeah. They're not from the Lord. They're all evil, weak thoughts. Well, then, and still, when I don't... We don't what? Go ahead. And when I, when I don't act on them, when I don't, yeah. when I just sit and I don't act on them, they flee. That's but if, right. Uh, but as the thing is, is if I do act on them, I open up a whole can of worms, and then I'm, I'm back to square one Absolute, every time. Absolutely. So stop doing that and give that woman a finger and don't leave her alone. Don't trust her. Don't, don't play with fire. Okay. And then my next question is, is, is it it's okay for me to, to hold her accountable and continue to take her back to court when she continues to break the court order, right? Yeah. If she's not doing what she's supposed to do, or have her arrested. But do not fall into her trap anymore, man. Yep. I appreciate that, Jesse. That's very helpful. I wish you well. Thank you. Let me know how it goes. All right. Have All a good right, day. I am so out of time. The hate report is coming up now. And after the hate report, join Friday TV. He black. 
after doing on Friday TV, the American Anchor Baby. Get on that straight and narrow, folks. Your thoughts are lying to you. Your emotions are lying to you. No such thing as a true thought ever. Ever, never, 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 ever. Lay down your weapons. All right? Get on that street and narrow it. Stay there. Men and women, you must be born again. Of a new nature, a clear mind. Uh, Dexter out of New York. Oh, Dexter is back. Keisha out of North Carolina. Uh, Jaime out of Minnesota. I am so out of time. I'll be back tomorrow. Men who and I was tomorrow. If y'all can, call me back tomorrow. And thank you for your super chat, your support, and everything, all right? The hate report is coming up now. Have a good day. Stay with the prayer. Do the prayer. Forgive. And don't get mad at anyone when they try to hurt you or anything because they're hurting themselves. You're only hurting you if you believe that they're hurting you. What the? All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. No more thinking. You better go talk to Take care, folks. Bye. Boy, you better stand up and up. Put your hand up and hut. Because huh. if you don't, then we lose. And then we got to hear the fake news. Whoa. So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. I noticed after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. 